Welcome to Build with Nas. My name is Nas. I'm the author of the Rebel Open Core Repo and a set of crates that are related to text user interfaces in Rust along with asynchronous terminal uh, crates as well. I'm also the author of developerlight.com, which is a developer site that I've been running for over two decades. I recently recorded a video on Rust lifetimes and realized that I actually, uh, where I, where I demonstrate, I use subtyping and variants with generics and lifetimes in Rust, but I realized uh, that I didn't actually uh, do an intro on what's on what subtyping and variants actually are. So I ended up um, creating this video and also writing this article, which um, uh, includes this video and the other lifetimes video as well. So it'll all be sorted once uh, uh, these get published. Um, so let's talk about subtyping and variants. Um, so if you're familiar with uh, object-oriented programming languages, uh, polymorphism can be expressed or equivalence between disparate types uh, can be expressed using interfaces and inheritance. So like for example, if you take Kotlin or Java or you, something like TypeScript where you have um, interfaces and uh, classes in some languages, classes can inherit from other classes, interfaces can inherit from inter other interfaces. You can even implement um, interfaces on classes and these are ways in which equivalence can be expressed across disparate types. In Rust, we don't have inheritance, there's no object orientation. So what we do have is an algebraic type system. So this algebraic type system, uh, one way in which common behavior uh, can be expressed is the trait system. So if we have two structs and they both exhibit a similar behavior, we express that as a trait. And then we say that this struct implements that trait, that struct implements that trait. We can also define relationship to, between traits. So you can have the notion of a subtrait and a super trait where a super trait, um, ha like a copy and clone, actually, is a real world example um, of this. There we go. Where um, the copy uh, trait is a subtrait of the clone super trait. And so that means anything that is copy is also clone, but anything that is clone is not necessarily copy. So this is the, this is the subtype, and that's the super type. So subtype, super type. And so, um, so yeah, um, in, 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 in uh, so that's the kind of concrete traits and uh, relationships between them. But what happens when these traits are generic? That's where variance comes in. So we'll talk about variance in just a moment. And in Rust, uh, generics and lifetimes, uh, just like you can specify generic types, you can also specify generic lifetimes. And so that's the generics and expression of generics is kind of types and lifetimes are all part of the type system in, in Rust, which is which is uh, kind of unique, I think, um, because lifetimes become part of the type definitions themselves. So in Rust, subtyping, subtyping refers to relationship between two types where one type can be used in place of the other. So we have a subtype which has a supertype. Any code that expects a supertype can also accept a subtype because super will do less, sub might do the same or more. So if we can accept a super, we can accept a sub because for sure a sub will do everything super does and maybe more. Flip isn't true. Just like inheritance, the opposite isn't true. Any code that expects a sub cannot ac accept a super. It's just like um, the this thing, the copy and the clone. So, um, yeah, so let's let's use a real example. So let's say that we had, we start with a trait that we haven't even made called display. This is part of the standard library. And what we want to do is we want to make a function that um, accepts a reference to a type where that type has a super trait of display. So that's what this this is that subtype super type. So T is any generic type. Display is, uh, let me just pull this up. It's just, uh, oops, uh, display this one. So it's a trait in standard format. So that's what this is. This is a trait. So we're saying any type T, which this is, this is a syntactic trigger. This is actually a where clause, but just skim over that for now. As far as we're concerned, what this means, this is saying that this ampersand t, the reference to t, 
uh, we can accept any any reference to t as long as that t whatever that t is um, is a subtype of display which is a super type or super trait so what we do is um, before we can put this into a print animal to action let's create two structs so we make a struct called cat and we implement the display trait for cat we have a dog they're practically the same except that the identifier is different here so they're two different types as far as rest is concerned the only thing that makes them similar to each other is the fact that they both implement the display trait and as you can see their display trait implementations differ one says cat the other says dog so now for print animal uh, we've written this function and it just assumes that whatever this animal is has uh, is of type uh, reference t right pointer to t and then we can use the syntax because anything that implements display get well actually work with this quotes curly braces um, print line uh, 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 formatting uh, uh, thing um, forget the name of it there's like a macro for this um, so okay so then let's say we make a cat and we just call it sparky make a dog whatever now when we say print animal cat ampersand cat it'll print the right thing and if we say print animal ampersand dog it'll also print the right thing so this is just a trivial example showcasing that oh okay these are completely different uh, uh, structs um, it just so happens they both implement this trait and because this particular function can accept an ampersand t that's what makes this work where there's a trait bound on t which says that t has a subtype of the super type or super trait display so another interesting sort of spin or twist on this is what if we make a, a vec of animals so if you think about it, it's like dog is a separate type cat is a separate type and vec we can't just say vec of dog because then we can't put a cat in it we can't say vec of cat because we can't put a dog in it so how would we put a cat and a dog in a vec well we would say vec the type signature would be uh, we have a vec whose type is a reference to anything that is a trait pointer actually it's just anything it's a vec of containing trait pointers to display the display trait that's what this ampersand din display is so ampersand din is type erasure because it's uh, something called uh, uh, trade pointer with trade objects it, it induces type erasure and we can essentially make a vec we can which can accept two different structs if we used ampersand impl display we wouldn't be able to stick an animal uh oh this is a typo this should be cat i'll fix this this is supposed to be cat i'll fix this after this video uh but yeah um so basically this um uh if 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 we used ampersand impl display then we wouldn't be able to put uh, dog and cat in this vec because that would be that would be problematic because of static dispatch um, and so um, the static dispatch syntax um, if you read through this stuff um, trade bound syntax um, it accepts something that resolves to a single type and here it can resolve to one of two different types and that's when we use um, trade objects, which is made specifically for this reason. And I have a whole video on uh, dynamic versus static dispatch, which goes into the nitty gritty of this, but that's that's essentially what's happening here. And again, check out the copy and uh, clone uh, uh, example, because that's a real world example. So that the, so far we've talked about subtyping and that kind of makes sense. I have to fix this typo. Now let's talk about variants, uh, now that we've uh, covered subtyping. So in Rust, variance describes how subtyping relationships are preserved when dealing, or not preserved, when dealing, dealing with generic types. So lifetime annotations are also part of the generic system, so anything in between those angle brackets. So T off, which is generic over whatever it is, you know, a lifetime and some other types, that's the, that's the thing. So it's the, you, have, you have T, and then you have all those things in those angle brackets, and variance is like, well, if I have two concrete uh, types that have relationships between them what happens when I make them generic what happens to those second order um, uh, uh, let's say relationships so a straightforward example is a generic type t is covariant if when sub is subtype of super um, 
like we have in our print animal. We have uh, here um, uh, T is a subtype of display. Um, then T of subtype is also a subtype of T of super, which is actually how this is this is working. This is how we can pass like ampersand cat and ampersand dog, which are different structs, except that both of these structs implement the display trait. And this uh, function signature says that um, as long as T uh, is a subtype of display, then ampersand T um, will um, can be can be accepted. So um, so we have cat which um, implements display. So ampersand T of cat is is we, we can take it here, and uh, and same with uh, with dog. So so that's how that's how that works. Um, and let's see. Uh, where is it? Yeah, that's what. So here we go. Covariant. So ampersand t type is covariant. This means that if sub is subtype of super, then ampersand sub is also a subtype of ampersand super. So that's how that's how like we can pass either uh, ampersand cat or ampersand dog because they both um, are uh, you know they both implement the display trait and ampersand t is covariant. It's a, a shared reference, which means it's immutable. So it's it's safe to think of it that way. It's safe to, to, to do these, to respect the, the relationships between the subtypes here. So uh, this is useful for references. In the code, cat and dog both implement the display trait. Since display is a trait bound on the print animal function, both ampersand cat and ampersand dog can be used as arguments because they are both subtypes of ampersand dying display, which is this thing here as well. When we have a vec of ampersand dying display, so we're saying ampersand and then dying display. So uh, so the, the both ampersand uh, cat and ampersand dog uh, resp uh, are covariant over ampersand dying display, and that's how we can put them both in a vec, and we can use them in the print animal function. So that's uh, that's the covariance uh, example. Okay, invariance. Invariance usually when it's something is immutable, it's gonna be invariant. So generic type T is invariant if there's no subtype typing relationship between T of sub and T of super, even when sub and sub sub is a subtype of super. So ampersand mute T, not ampersand T, the ampersand mute T, the mutable reference, is invariant. This means that if sub is a subtype of super, there is no subtyping relationship between ampersand mute sub and ampersand mute super. So similarly, there's something called unsafe cell T that is also invariant. That means there's no subtyping relationship between unsafe cell sub and unsafe cell super, even when sub is a subtype of super. So they, they have something to do with the, the mutability. And um, because these, these are mutable, uh, they require much stricter type constraints to ensure safety. Contravariance is like the flip where super and sub are flipped. And so the, usually the use case of this is um, functions that have uh, take callbacks as an argument. So with this information, you can take a look at this table and uh, please do check out some of these other resources. Like there's a lot of good ones. Um, wow, that's a lot of links. Let me just close them. So we have this one. This is a good one. Um, subtyping and variance. Uh, this is another restonomicon. This goes into lifetimes as well. That's why that's where I got the that table from. Then we have the rest compiler itself if you wanted it you know the compiler development guide on how um, variance in subtyping is actually evaluated by the compiler so you could take a look at this to to really like get into the nitty-gritty of this and Rustonomicon has a great uh, uh, information on ownership and lifetimes which um, is good to take a look at as well so you can see it here that subtyping variance scheme here so yeah, with that, that's the end of this particular video. Uh, if you like this video, please give, uh, give, uh, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel um, so you can be notified when new videos are dropped. Um, also, if you haven't already, subscribe to developerlife.com for updates. Um, I only do newsletters when I post new content either on the YouTube channel or uh, create an article, which isn't that many, maybe like one or two a month. Uh, you might have noticed all the comments on all the social media platforms where I can. I've turned them off because uh, I don't want to deal with negative comments. They're good comments, but they're also negative comments, and so I just turned them off. If you do want to provide uh, feedback, uh, please do join our Discord server. That's what that's for. So uh, if you have comments and thoughts on videos and articles, if you've seen some typos, if 
you want to see some new content, uh, you know, please let me know by joining our Discord. Um, with that, that's the end of this particular video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.